Alright, in this video I'm going over price discrimination and in particular first degree, second degree, and third degree price discrimination and what's the difference between them. So basically first degree price discrimination is perfect price discrimination. So with per perfect per blah, blah, blah. with perfect price discrimination, um, basically the firm looks inside the person's head to see exactly what is the maximum amount the person would pay for that product. So that's how the de demand curve is derived. The demand curve we know is derived by lining people up along this axis according to how much they are willing to pay for the product in their head. So this first person is willing to pay $100, the second person is willing to pay $99 for the product, the third person is willing to pay $98, etc, etc. And normally the firm can only choose one price and it has to charge everybody the same price. And of course the people who value it at a high value end up benefiting from that because the person who values it at $100 ends up paying 50 and that surplus of 50 extra dollars goes to that that person. Um, but with perfect price discrimination, in other words first degree price discrimination, the firm looks at that person, they see magically inside the person's head, they say, I see that you value this product at $100, so I'm going to charge you personally $100. Now we know that that is impossible, no firm can perfectly know what a person is willing to pay. Um, so this never happens in the real world. Um, some people will make arguments that things like um, colleges have per first degree price discrimination because they can see the parents income and therefore they adjust the price based on the parents income. But of course that's not perfect price discrimination because the colleges can't see into people's heads to know how much they value the education at. So it could be that um, you, you take like 10 different people, all who have an income of $50,000, each of them value the college education at a different amount, and the college of course is not looking inside their head to see that. So um, perfect price discrimination, first degree price discrimination, it's basically not a thing, but you can model it nicely over here on this graph. So, um, so we made it a thing as an economist just to I mean, just to get the concept out there and to play around with what is the maximum amount that companies could elicit out of people, and this is the maximum amount. So second degree price discrimination, what is second degree price discrimination? Oh, and let me just remind you in the notes, first degree, degree price discrimination is the see inside the customer's head price discrimination. Okay, just to be clear about that. All right, second degree price discrimination, which is probably the most common kind of price discrimination, is where you price discriminate by separating out the quality of products. So um, uh, let me give you some examples of the, these. Okay, the first example is coach class airline tickets versus first class. The second example is um, toilet paper sold in rolls of a thousand, which obviously you're going to sell to a business or some large group, versus eight roll versions of toilet paper. And you, you can probably charge more per roll of toilet paper to the person buying for their household than you can to the company who doesn't really care about the quality and such. Um, let me give you a couple more examples. So there's the um, when you go to the ballet or the theater, there's mezzanine tickets versus balcony tickets. Alright, and there's low deductible insurance versus high deductible insurance. Um, so one thing you notice that these have in common is that the price discrimination doesn't happen by looking at the person who's buying and making a decision based on who that person is. They're all completely blind to who's buying. Rather, they separate out who, who values the product more versus who, who will, is willing to pay less for the product based on the quality of the product. And this is a strategic decision. As a matter of fact, some people have argued that airlines intentionally make coach class airline tickets a little more uncomfortable than necessary just to separate out the first class from the coach class tickets to make sure that they elicit as much money as possible from the people who are willing and able to pay for the first class tickets. 
So you're trying to price discriminate based on the quality or quantity of the product. Um, mezzanine tickets versus balcony tickets, you get a lot of money out of the people who are willing to pay that, but you still have the product available at a lower quality to college students who um, buy the balcony tickets for cheap. And then of course low deductible versus high deductible insurance, this is going to be separating out sick people from healthy people, and of course sick people drive up the cost of health insurance, so um, this is actually a very deep concept that gets into adverse selection, which we'll cover at another time, but um, all of these are examples of second degree price discrimination. So what about third degree price discrimination? Okay, the key here with third degree price discrimination is that you are looking at the person buying and you're charging a price based on what you see in that person who's buying the ticket. So classic example here are senior citizen discounts or student discounts. And there's some things that are kind of in between second and third degree price discrimination. For example, the location of a business might be one way of price discriminating, um, like uh, the, uh, the coffee shop in the rich neighborhood might charge a higher price for coffee than the coffee shop in a poor neighborhood. And is that third degree price discrimination because you know the customers are most likely to be the people who live around there, in which case you're looking at that person and saying, you live in a rich neighborhood, I'm charging you a higher price. Or is the coffee, the quality of the coffee shop higher because it's in a ritzy neighborhood and therefore it's a different product. Um, that's, that could be argued both ways. The same thing, prices in, in an airport versus, versus prices not in an airport. Um, are you saying, okay, you're the type of person who can fly, so looking at you personally, I'm going to charge you a higher price, or is that product um, differentiated based on quality, you can access this in a uh, different time zone, and other things can be going on in terms of uh, in the airport and out of the airport, but basically you get the idea. The difference between second and third degree price discrimination is second degree is you're manipulating the quality or quantity of the product in order to price discriminate by attracting certain people to one product and other people to another product where you want to charge a different price to those two groups. Whereas third degree price discrimination, you're looking at the personal characteristics of the person buying and charging them a different price based on their personal characteristics.